Hello students, we know that from July 1st, criminal laws are coming into force. Let us look at what are the three important criminal laws and also what are the key highlights of this criminal laws and one more thing we are going to look in the classes, what is the need for this criminal laws. Let us start the subject. First one, historically we have three criminal laws in India. What is that? IPC, which is Indian Penal Code. And what is the second one? CRPC. Code of Criminal Procedure. Third one is Indian Evidence Act, IEA, it's also called. So, now, these th three are going to be replaced by, IPC is going to be replaced by Bardia Nyaya Sanhita. The CRPC is going to be replaced by Bardia Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita. This Indian Evidence Act is going to be replaced by Bharatiya Saksha Act. These are the three things going to be replaced. And now let us look at the, what is the need? What is the now, let us look at what is the need for this replacement and these three coming to the IPC and CP, CRPC and the Indian Evidence Act, these three are colonial legislations. Firstly, what is the need to replace this? Colonial legislations. These are used to suppress the dissent of Indians and also promote the British rule in the India. For example, if you have seen IPC section 124A talks about sedition. It criminalizes sedition and most of the freedom fighters are charged under this section which criminalizes the sedition. And coming to this colonial legislations, we need to change this legislations. And second one, most of these legislations are outdated in framework. These laws are made in 19th century which doesn't align to the contemporary social situations. For example, if you have seen in Joshua Sign versus Union of India case, Supreme Court of India decriminalizes adultery which shows there is an evolving need for the justice. Coming to the third one, these are complex in nature. And most of them speak about the procedural technicalities and gives important to the procedure rather than giving the justice in first place. If you have seen this, we have seen many under trials happening. So, and for this we need to change the laws. The fourth one, gender insensitivity. Insensitivity. Most of the these laws are outdated in nature and lack of sense and lack sensitivity towards gender, which is women and which are women and children. You can see this from National Family Health Survey 5 report states that one in five women face physical or sexual abuse in daily lives. We can see there is a lack of deterrence for these kind of activities as these activities are still happening. And fifth one, these laws lack victim-centric approach. Twenty twenty report states that only 
30 percent of eligible victims received compensation most of the victims didn't even receive the compensation and sixth one it lacks technological integration we have seen the threats and also crimes are evolving in nature for example crypto crimes globally in 2022 itself 2.4 million crimes happened with relation to the crypto crimes but do you know what is the conviction rate of these crimes it is just only 3% This shows we are not equipped to deal with current crimes. Fifth one, less scope. Not only the crypto crimes and all these things, but the terrorisms, which is cross-border terrorisms. Mob lynchings, social. Drone attacks. The nature of attacks is also changing and they are also becoming more and more complex. So this we need an legal framework to fight against this. So these are the reasons we need new laws. Let us look at the key highlights of each and every bill we have seen. First one, Bharti Nyaya Samhita. It repels provision of sedition, which is 124A of IPC. Secondly, it provides serious punishments for gang rapes. Any form of gang rape is punished for 20 years of imprisonment. And if a rape is against the child, it, is, it can be punished with capital punishment and death penalty. And thirdly, it provides for It provides for criminalization of sexual relations under false pretext, which means it criminalizes any kind of sexual relation under false pretext of marrying that person. And thirdly, it provides for omission of adultery as an offence. It provides for marital rape. Fashnonji. It provides for marital rape as an exception for non-consensual sexual relations and it provides for trial in absentia which means if a person is not present during the trial, trial can happen and thirdly it provides for legal definition for terrorism. These are the key highlighting features of this bill. Let us look at the second bill. What is the second bill? Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanita. The key highlights of this bill is firstly in relation to the FIR. It provides for zero FIR, which means a person can file FIR from any place in the country. This is an innovative provision in this bill. Second one being FIR 
can be filed electronically. And this bill also enables digitalization by making someone's trial electronically and also the operations such as search and seizure operations must be mandatorily video recorded and third one Bharatiya Saksha Bill. This bill expands the definition of evidence. Now the evidence includes electronic evidence also. And second one, it provides for digitalization of case records, FIRs and also the evidences which are taken. These are the key highlighting provisions of these three bills. Thank you.